Okay. Um, let's check the event before it runs out. Yeah, I think everything is unlocked by now. Chant frogs are really mean. Okay, this is it. Let's check. Who do I have to talk to? Hmm. Oh, right. Huh? Oh, the bot didn't say the name of the video. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, Pamela's getting used to how you look now. That Pamela can even remember what you look like without the chaplet. So much. Uh, Paimon seems to recall some baldness <laughs> at the top of your head. Uh, uh -huh. Howdy disposition. But Paimon didn't expect you to get the chaplet so easily. So it was mostly thanks to our help. Bah, mention the purpose of the best no more appeal floater. The thing of greatness, greatest importance the reason why we were able to claim the chaplet so easily was because I am a power worthy of the Twin Horn Chaplet. Hence, everything fell into place as it was meant to be. Perhaps I was fitted to bear this crown from the day of my birth. <laughs> Bragging loudly, I see. Elder Zervan, what brings you here? Uh, just seeing if our newest Bloomguard is fulfilling her duties. Duties? Oh no, do you think claiming such a title would bring you nothing but fame and fortune, Sorush? Impossible, I am no party of rank ignorance. The duties I have, have not been neglected. Indeed, I have also performed the necessary feats to be worthy of my accolades. Though the flashing flame might steal your attention, the gradual trickle of enduring devotion may also be worth it of praise. Mm. In time, you, in the time you have spent away from us, there have been countless parry who, though unable to ever gain the title of Plungars, still contributes to our greater community with quiet dignity. Mm -hmm. I thought that you would perform some deeds that would prove your worthness of the title of Bloomguard. As it turns out, however, it seems you're, you're just being idling about. You've just been idling about, right? Hey, saying she does nothing is going too far, Sorush is already pretty great, right, Ignis? Well, I mean, hey, stop being so strict. I do not mean to neglect my du duties, it's just that the responsibilities of a Bloomguard weren't fully detailed on by the Order of Skeptics. It is a part tradition after all, trying to learn from learn it from humans is pure folly. Though so you have earned the approval of the Gvarena, you remain a young party, Some ta in times like this, it is best to direct and consult me for guidance. Ask you for guidance directly, Elder, but no, the chaplet possesses a great deal of knowledge. I need but contemplate for a moment before I am greeted with answers. But Servant is right here. She even said that if you have questions, she should she will answer. We don't need to go hunting for details anymore. From Paimon uh, in his deepest deep adventuring experience, chances like these are pretty few. You regret not taking this opportunity. I doubt none my other sincerity. It's just I heard the order of skeptics say that only the ancients will fight themselves are worth of any marriage. Isn't that something someone else told you as well? The order of skeptics even constantly makes mistakes 
in its official documents. Yeah, do you really think the artist guy is more trustworthy than Zervan? Indeed, you offer truth in your insight, yes, Napat Pinfloater. I am no longer the source from before. With the Kvarina's approval, I must act with maturity and live up to the title of Bungard. Uh, Zervan, I mean, other Zervan, what are the exact obligations that a Bungard must fulfill? I beg of you to enlighten me. Though I have been neglectful in the past, I will do my utmost now to remedy my failings. Wow, Paimon didn't expect the wish to be so obedient. What happened? Paimon feels a little touched. Huh. Well, your words give me confidence. The Blungar's duties are best and may take days and nights to recall in their totality. However, considering that you have spent far more time with the humans than those of your own kind, let's start something simple. As for all those who bear the title of Blungard, extraordinary competence and keen insight are necessities. I've already prepared six training tasks, with three main shoot test flying skills, and the other three, well, they'll need Sorus to clear out some potential threats. This train sounds kind of familiar. Sounds familiar? It is familiar. Isn't this just something we do all the time? And a thought, big floater. As long as I successfully finish these missions, my elder must concede that I am worthy and prepared to be for the main home of Bloomgard. So, it sounds simple. These are all tests delivered unto me by my elder. I must unleash my fullest effort when dealing with them. Very good, very good. Conveniently, Sorush, Yasnapati and his companion are here. There is a task you can help her successfully complete. It is no hard matter though, as you know. Sorush has been close with the order of skeptics and humans, while drifting further from our traditions. I would like to ask you to serve as an audience and listen to Sorush recount the past. A Bloomgard should naturally be able to speak of historical events, yes? Of course. If we all need to do if all we need to do is hear Sorush tell a story, then it does sound pretty simple. Then I'll leave this to you too. As for the training that Sorush must complete by herself, I will let her know momentarily. You two merely need to accompany me her. Mm. In the Recollector's Path event, you must help Sarush follow Zervan's instructions to discover her role as Bungard. When each stage of the Recollector's Path begins, Sarush must listen to Zervan's teachings and then go to the specified site to undergo two trials before engaging in a short summary of past, past insane traits. trials. There are leaves around, and I know just the tune to accompany them. If you Since wish to hear. had strange energy in your plane out a long time ago, the source was always going to catch these things, and it's a sign that the other always favored me. Yes, a party may float her merriness into my heroic feats. During the tranquil trial test, trial, uh, Sorush. Uh, Tranquil Trail Trial. Uh, so Rush will need to use the Nidoran fruit and the curious, curious scattered nearby to pursue your uninvited guests. I guess it might is making some noise. During the trial, Rush can throw out a limited number of Nidora fruits as the fruits he Different curious, various effects will be triggered with the effect on nearby uninvited guests. When the situation gets too cluttered, you can use analyze to summarize the specialties of various curious and invited guests, and thus figure out a way to guard them out. Okay. Hmm. Oh, for very good people in both streets and just in this.
Perfect. Let let's try and see how we do this. This should contain supplies for the size of the we don't need to drag them all away. The boat is starting to be Lolly is already dead, completed the world. Oh, uh, what's around them? Pink, not nice. Should we wake them up, scare them off? Our special flower, it can speed a large fruit, smashing fruit, demons, of them. Okay, now use more than 20. That's the thing. That scares them. Oh. better but I got all the things okay all the checks mm -hmm. no that's far enough That's all part of the first one. Okay. Time to go. During the reinforced reminiscence trial, Sarush can use memory fragments to check important reminiscence. You must see Sarush in find the correct location for triple the set reminiscence. Once you reach the correct location, use the memory fragment to match the remains of the actual site to complete it. As your trial starts, the time will start ticking down. Once you finish doing so, so we should receive a hint to help her find the correct location. Okay. Mm. almost where I need it to be but I guess I actually went too far There's, there's a distance, okay.
Was I think the hint? I didn't pay attention to time. Uh, is this the last spot of our first day? Uh, we're pretty familiar with this place, seeing how we've been here plenty of times. If the play folder is so confident, then why not swap roles with me? I will play the audience, you may be the speaker. Yeah, let's give it a try. Here comes Pamela. The place before us, covered with flowers and flow flowing water, is the Vorukasha Oasis. This place doesn't have... Uh, right, this place isn't infested by demons of death, death but it is the home of the party. There are many party here. The best among them is one called Zerfan. So Rush, you were born here too, right? So you are different from the other party. For example, while the other party only sound kind of weird when they speak, you sound really weird. Uh, you all came from the same waters. But why is it that only you are so strange? Hey, that was not lying. When you were speaking to the order of skeptics, your words were kind of weird. Well, the skeptics themselves sounded weird too, so there's that. Well, Paimon thought all, all the other party were going to be exactly like you. In fact, Paimon was worried about that until we finally got to the Vorukasha with Zemetsuva. Then we found out that only you were like. Uh, how should Paimon put this? You have a particular way of speaking to the art of skeptics, right? It seems the art of skeptics had too much of an influence on her. Oh, I'm not denying that. Seeing as you have no objections, Paimon will keep going. There is a big stump in the Vorukasha Oasis. Bill Floater, you absolute. Uh, it's the Harvest Tokum in the Vorukasha Oasis. Man, this party names sure are a mouthful. And it totally is a big stump, isn't it? Pamela remembers you saying that the stump is also a god, and that the party have a deep relationship with it. So, these are indeed the facts. Letting the fail floater describe them would be too unflattering. I shall resume the role of the speaker. Alright, but Pamela thought she was making it easy to understand. And regardless, 500 years ago, our great god gave all to quell the disaster afflicted in this place. As such, all the Amrita here is the last gift from the Divine. Nursed by the Amrita, the Harvest Tokum and the party emerge. The eldest of the party is and my elder is Zervan. My birth came much later, so I was not a personal witness to those events. I heard my elder speak of it, but elder Zervan clearly associated with the art of skeptics when they were first established, but after my birth, all contacts seemed to be lost between them. Though my elder has long stated the importance of party traditions, she rarely mentions the past in detail when she speaks with me. Instead, it was the order of skeptics who enthusiastically shared the results of their historical research with me, and approved of my wish to follow the footsteps of the twin bird. Hmm, so after all that, you slowly drift away from the other party and learn your strange way of speaking from the art of skeptics. Oh, I suppose that can be seen as correct, objectively speaking. It sounds like our rebellious face. Rebellious face? I heard the humans in the art of skeptics mention something about this. They say the researchers in the forest experienced a Satyavada life or something like that. Is this rebellious phase a familiar thing that humans progress through? Yeah, it sounds pretty similar. Maybe you can think of it as a necessary process of growth. It's not entirely like such a bad life thing that the researchers experience. In fact, by most heard that plenty of human children experience it. Generally, kids going through a rebellious phase will resist the care of their parents and try to assert their independence. That's why Paimon's heard anyway. 
Uh, just like you did. Hmm, my past has little to do with my present. Whatever can be said, I have now returned to the Vorkasha Oasis and earned the Varuna's favor. There may swoosh. Never mind, Pale Floater, it means nothing to be patronized by one as immature as you. That's all for today. Yes, Napat, do you or the Pale Floater wish to ask anything? Speaking of, are the Pari and Aranara related in any way? Why do you ask this? Because the Pari and Aranara are both small, but are still capable of great things. To describe your adventures with the Aranara and all the other Aranara swoosh. Mm, how very important festival Sabbath appears to be. I heard my elder mention it once, but only thought of it as little more than a joyful gathering for the Arnara. But if the Arnara have their own day, why do we parry possess nothing of equivalence? I must mention this to my elder. Why do we want a pair of festival? Is it because you can eat lots of tasty snacks during the festival? Of course not. The Pari Festival should, should have humans offering their odds and songs to us, while I get to choose the best singer of the lot. That doesn't sound like a festival at all. Well, not for the attending humans, anyway. It's more like a high-pressure competition. But it is an enjoyable celebration for me, yes? Hence, I believe my elder may also enjoy such an occasion. Perhaps Zerva is right, for Sarush becomes so-called Bloomguard, she might need a bit more training. Okay, yeah, but there was only two? Wasn't there a third thing here? Okay. Fourth, actually, Time to because go. the first thing was just talking to Zerva. Oh, I think I have... I think I had the part of the retreat. Time to go. Is the first part of the training went well? I will go down for you could say so. Yeah, maybe it was a bit too easy for Sarush. Uh, then I look forward to seeing her coming performance. Alright, about listening to Sarush tell stories, it turned out that Sarush went through a rebellious phase. Speak no more of this. Uh, uh, anyhow, I have finally shared that stage of my life. The important thing is that I, with my Yasna Pat and the Pale Floater, recall the history following the birth of the party, and spoke of the familiars of the forest and their special festival. The fact that we, as party, do not have such a celebration of our own makes me troubled. Do you not feel the same way, Elder? If it were up to me, we should let humans attend the party festival and hear from them the praises they sing for the party. Afterwards, we shall pick the best singer. To my knowledge, Festival Sava is not a day to be so willfully and wastefully spent. Hmm. Paimon always thought Sorus' desire to get humans to record her deeds was different from the other party. Is this also the influence of the Order of the Skeptics? That is the very reason why recalling and pondering the past is significant. Huh, whatever happens, I look forward to seeing her coming performance. Okay. Next place. Oh, right next to the one. Time to go. Uh, uh, 
not interrupt the impulse. Sarush must reach the destination within the time limit. The more time Sarush has left upon completing, and the more valid Korhalas she obtain, the higher your challenge score will be. During the trial, get close to glowing red. Reds to borrow their power. It's pretty forward over a certain distance and temporarily expand your collection and effect for valid color corals. Oh. Sleet draws fruit, also exists within the trials. After being hit by them, Sorush's vision will be briefly disrupted, and the time remaining on the trial will also decrease, resulting in a lower final score. Okay, don't care for flat scores. Okay, easy. Mm, hopefully on the ground. Oh, pretty close. Okay, that means the distance. Wait, Pamela remembers this place. I've been here before. It does leave an impression. It sure scared Pamela pretty good. Uh, Pamela remembers that Sarush said this weather got sealed here because he was unlucky. So, what does it have to do with Sarush's training? Uh, does her actually mean to say, Haha, behold Sarush. Behold the fate of the unfortunate. Um, my other head is no part of such idle nature. Back to the top. Though I did not elaborate on the weather in detail when we passed through here earlier, the catastrophe that caused it to, should be familiar to you. The one that happened 500 years ago? Indeed, the weather must have been frozen in an instant. As it has been crystallized, its form remains in perpetuity. It's as if it would start burning through the earth once again, again once unsealed. The moment it will be frozen in time. Ah, Paimon doesn't want to end up like this, like that. You say what happened to the weather happened in an instant. Ah, no, no. Just think of it, scarce Paimon. It won't, I won't let it happen. And yeah. Pamela won't, won't let something so horrible happen to you either. Uh, then you should thank us, Parry. 
During those days of ruin, many species and races, including the party, gave their lives. Sometimes even things more precious than, than their lives. Their sacrifices are why we are spared from facing the same irrevo irrevocable fate. And just so, as I was not there to witness the catastrophe, when this land faces danger, once again I must take action. Then, from what you're saying, this Venet is even older than you are, which should also make it your elder. However, it will not be returning to life. It has been sealed in its crystallized state for centuries. Perhaps the only fate that awaits it is gradual dissolution. Well, with how severe the loss of life was during the catastrophe, the Venet, like countless other unfortunate souls, were frozen at the moment that calamity struck. But many more suffered even greater fates, graver fates than this poor fool before us, for they had already worn away beneath the grinding passing of time itself. To this day, nothing remains of them, no, not memory nor memorial. This one before us only lingers because of its immense size and the fact that it has been hidden away in this cave from the glaring eye of the sun and lashing winds, thus the intactness of its condition. However, no being on this land can overcome time. Not even remains a husks will wither. One day, there will be nothing left of it either. That sounds kind of sad, not having any trace that shows you lived once. Oh, records left here by humans should have something relating to the planet. I presume such a thing is rare for humans, no? From what I heard my others say, aside from the other skeptics, there were also researchers from the forest here seeking inquiry. So some humans believe that the Setek planet is the completed state of a quicksand eel. Oh, those tiny eels, some believe, become that? To hold such theories and assumptions make, makes one worry for the content recorded by these humans. Okay, so that's just a conspiracy, it's not actual. Okay, that information is not reliable at all. I think these records are obviously false. Yet, you still enthusiastically found a human to serve as your Yasna Pat. Maybe before this crystal is entirely corroded, the poems and odds dedicated to you will have changed beyond your recognition. Maybe the Bloomberg mentioned in the odds might not be pink or cute, but instead have a rust but reliable exterior, a mild and respectful personality and act with rationality and calmness, huh? That sounds a lot like the idolized image of a guardian. But that sounds not like you, Sorosh. Absolutely not. Wait, I believe I understand what my other desires. She must be reminding me to find a better way to record my deeds. Hmm, my other does possess foresight indeed. I must offer her my deepest thanks. My mom doesn't think she made that. I was supposed to go talk to her again. Alright. Time to go. Looks like you successfully completed your training. Uh, we got it done, but uh, Sarush, after seeing the crystallized planet, she said with real sincerity that even though it had existed for centuries, one day it would still disappear without a trace. And then immediately afterwards, when we mentioned that her odds might be distorted as well, her mood changed instantly. Hmm, but of course, my deeds, I mean, the deeds of us, Parry, should be eternal. 
how can such a thing be compared to that which might pass into dust and ash? If something cannot be recorded properly, then there must be something wrong with the method. You wish to remind me of this fact, which is why you sent me to build the crystallized planet. Am I right, Elder Servant? Huh, that's the way you see it. Interesting. Do you care nothing for the renown of the party? If you're speaking of renown, in the way humans understand it, not so much. Whatever you say, the present day members of the other skeptics are so very dull. Of course, if there are more interesting individuals like Inus or Paimon, then that would be a different case entirely. And a compliment from Zervan. Thanks, appreciate the praise, Elder. Can interesting be considered a compliment? It is by my standards. Alright, and nothing I don't chatter. If Sarush still thinks so highly of this human notion of renown, then the training that comes next might be just right. Alright, I'll read your good news. Uh, underground or above ground? Above. Time to go. Time to go. Does it matter? No. Oh, it does.
Clear weather all around brightens the heart. Huh. I better pay more attention. Hmm. All right. Hey, isn't this place you pass by looking for me here? So me here shouldn't be here right now, right? All those thorns, they should be Mihir's companions. They look pretty good. Speaking of which, they helped us a lot. Bill Floater, did you forget all that I have accomplished? No way, you you may complain a lot, but you do care about your people, right? Uh, what did you do, Sarush? I can't seem to recall. Sarush is the hero of this story. No, so much. How can you be so forgetful, yes, Napat? I punished you for the tasks of several more oaths. Huh, Paimo knew it. You got a big bark to go with your soft heart. Malicious Lander. I was only here because I wished to earn the chaplet. If the other hadn't made me come, hmm. Well, whatever you say, me here's part of the reason you even managed to claim the Twin Horn chaplet. Shouldn't you be shouldn't you thank her for that at least? Her bas for such figure one stain and still struggling to I say she would only be worth any merit after another ten pleasing pilgrimages. Then it's way too many. Uh, wait a minute, on second thought I don't think it wouldn't be too hard. The path really isn't that long. So the way is along running it repeatedly does make me tired. It's not long. Yeah, maybe we can use it as an exercise every now and again. From the name Paimon thought we would be walking for ten days and nights. As it turns out we didn't even need to go that far. Mm, the shortness of this trial is making Paimon suspicious. If it was as long as the ocean is pilgrimage, then perhaps I will respect her. As it says now, I can only state that the distance of the cleansing pilgrimage suits me here. Oceanist pilgrimage. After the catastrophe, a great number of Oceanists came from Fontaine to Sumeru. Oh, they are from Fontaine. Oh. I was only the impression they came from this. They are called Oceanids. That's probably why I thought they came from the sea, from the ocean. Uh, with the path they walked becoming their so called holy path. Strange, why would the Oceanids need to come to Sumeru? Pilgrimage? A pilgrimage for what? Um, I only heard of such a thing from my elder. So, there have been Oceanids from Fontaine. I haven't truly looked into it. Could it be for the harvest token? Uh, right, Sarush so said that the harvest token was the god that let the party be born. If honor is a big deal here, then the thing most deserving of it, of it is definitely the harvest token. But what's the potential relationship between the Oceanids and the harvest token? Don't tell Paimon the Oceanids and Pari are like distantly related. Mm, looking at you carefully, Paimon's really beginning to see the resemblance. Now, oh, Paimon hasn't discovered any world-shaking secrets, has she? You're not that similar. Maybe a bit. Yeah, the first time I saw it, I thought it was a uh, fire, a pyro elemental. 
The slender flows from your lips again, your floater. I know nothing of any else in it. Uh, you're probably right. Sorush did say that the distance Osenids need to travel for their pilgrimage is far longer than Mihir's cleansing. But if that's true, does that mean the Osenids are stronger than the party? Is Sorush admitting defeat? <laughs> what? I didn't mean that. In all seriousness, the cleansing pilgrimage is not actually tied to distance. It is more of a symbolic affair, showcasing a rise and return to form. Mm, that sounds impressive, but... Regardless, it is irrational to brush off Perry as lesser than the Oceanids. And not because of any bias I may or may not have regarding me here. Speaking of which, why did Servan say that the next part of the train was just right for Sarush? It doesn't look like anything special here. Also, Mihir is missing too. So, if she was here, Sarush probably wouldn't talk to her properly either. So they are pretty different in a lot of ways. One, round, one is round and the other is freaky. Mihir doesn't need a, doesn't need a yes or fact. Yes, she also said that being forgotten is a good thing. The fool, if her existence and her efforts over the centuries are forgotten, they, what was it all for? Maybe that's a question that Zervon wants Sorush to think about. It seems that Sorush still needs more time, sometime. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. Without knowing, the train has progressed to its latter half. How are things going? You can say we are hitting our stride. There's still some room for improvement. We are hitting our stride. So, when Sorush tells us stories, there really seems to be some self-reflection happening. Dialogue is a good way for Sorush to learn, especially as, as the people she's talking to are more interesting than those of the other skeptics. Elder, are you being arbitrary? It is a remarkable is not bad, but not all of the other skeptics members are. Perhaps they do have momentary instances of virtue between sessions of flattery and deception. Ugh. I see you still need convincing. We will let our witness, Ignis and Paimon, give a review regarding your performance. Of course, that is after you finish your recalling. Clear weather all around brightens the heart.
Just like that. That's not the one. Nope. I think it should be the one. Okay, the hint. Okay, I was a bit afraid to go too far. It's so quiet, no one's here. Even if Rational was here, it, would, it should still be quiet. Quite quiet. Yeah, but if she was here, we would need to talk softer. She always has that sleepy look on her face. And she didn't seem too happy when we woke her using the corridors. If I'm on her, that the quieter someone is, the worse it gets when they get angry. Who knows what Rational is like when she's enraged. Then, should that be true, Mayasna Pati is the one we should fear the most, yes? Uh, oh, Paimon knows him the best. Chloe knows he's the one for talking, he's still super nice, right? I am uh, about to get mad for real. Uh, let's just stay quiet. Okay, so I gotta say something. The sense is actually making Paimon nervous. Very well, let us refocus. As you behold, this tree is called Barson. Uh, uh, a rational is it's familiar, so she is absent right now. And 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 nothing. There is nothing more to say of rational in the bat, so feels like you're hiding something, right? About the corridors. Hiding? Absurd. As for the drums, haven't you already seen them in use? Speaking of which, Pamela remembers Russian saying that she's the one who threw the car drums elsewhere. That really surprised uh, Nazayuna. If Paimon recalls, you were really nervous then and didn't respond to Nazayuna's questioning. The way it looks now, the other skeptics archives were really off the mark so playing the drums didn't wake rational paimon seems to understand why zervan doesn't trust the current order of skeptics think so rich did they really help the clothes they gave are half truths at best hmm. the current generation of the art skeptics indeed does have some lacking members but like a tree no matter how many leaves flourish there will always be some that will shrivel and dry. Once these dry leaves break and scatter, those that will remain, they will be the ones that can be relied upon. Yes. How did your artist be become like this? I also want to know. It is because I have been with the artist sketches too long that I grew unable to discern their gradual changes. Only when I began speaking with you and other outsiders did I realize the artist skeptics had changed. It has been a few hundred years, besides the name being the same, they must have cycled through a few generations of different members already. Will the fame I seek, the fame I wish for the Asna Pass to eulogize for me, also erode into this? With everything changed, Carrying only a hollow title for others to recall. Is that what my other wishes that I learned? No, it shouldn't be. But so there's no need to be down. Maybe maybe Zervan didn't mean that. Seeing Sorush so depressed makes Pamela feel like she did something wrong. Maybe we shouldn't have Zervan cheer her up.
Oh, Soros, you appear weary. Did you find an obstacle in your progress? Should we call it an obstacle or a sense of confusion? Recall what was said during the talk with Soros to Zerva. I see. However, the records of humans deviating from actual reality isn't anything new. They are forgetful and prejudiced people, after all. Considering how vast and complex the affairs of the world generally are, observers might be able to get an overview of the major details but not be able to grasp the minu minutia, 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 minutia. Though present during said affairs, might be uh, direct witnesses, uh, but still find themselves unable to move beyond their personal sub sub subjectivity. Oh, this doesn't feel very comforting. Oh, so you wish for me to provide some warm words to placate Sarush? Did you forget that this is, this is part of our training? To be able to overcome problems by oneself, that's the point of training, right? My mom guesses that makes sense. If Sarush cannot make, meet this task successfully, then all that can be said is that she is unworthy of the title of Blongard, and will not be able to bear the weight of the Twin Horn Chaplet. And when the time comes, gentle though I am right now, I can only do what must be done, no matter how cruel. Oh, will you take the chaplet from me? As for the punishment for failure, I suppose you will discover that yourself, should you truly fail. Oh, if Sarush doesn't want to be bald, she better try extra hard now. Time to go. Cool. I like that one. Yeah, there should be more things like that. Hmm. Oh no, I don't have to pick that one out. So. I'm gonna light this up. Uh, that makes it easier. Just to remain.
Time to go. It has been a familiar. Uh, it has long been a familiar sight to me, but now I feel only conflicted thinking about it. Uh, on the bright side, maybe this this may mean that Sarush has matured. I don't know if this is growth or a decline instead. Cheer up, Sarush. It's not like you get so. It's not like you to get so down. Right, since we're already here, why don't you tell us about the early history of the other skeptics? Although things are the way they are now, there must be a point to their establishment, right? Otherwise, Zervan wouldn't have helped them and you wouldn't have been drawn to them. Very well, if you wish to listen, I will speak. However, you must know that my birth came after the Order's capital was formed. What happened prior is but a hearsay to me as well. It was said that before all that transpired, there were some of absolute purity and virtue who attempted to spread the word of the catastrophe was that the, the catastrophe was imminent. But carrying a message does not halt the coming of ruin. Soon, darkness washed over the lanes as rolling tides trolling all that lived in fear. Just as we saw of the Satek Wedded, even the strongest creatures were crystallized, perishing during the event. Comparatively with how soft and weak humans are, the resulting scurrying can be considered a personal failing. But some individuals arrived, rushing into the maelstrom that was the Calamity. Were these people uh, the first order of skeptics? Indeed, their leader was Nagaryuna. He once was a researcher who worked in the depths of the woods, but he put boots down here to help alleviate the aftershock of the catastrophe. Yes. Uh, there was another one with golden hair, though my elder spoke little of him, he should come as an interesting individual, I think. Uh, it's a real shame that he only lived a, a few hundred years ago. If he was still here, Paimon would love to see him meet Ings. Then we can see who's more interesting. Why are we competing? Well, my picture is assured. Following this, after my birth, the after effects of the catastrophe stabilized. So Sorush had nothing to do then. Uh, not entirely. As the filth will never be fully eradicated, it's just that noble sacrifices like the one made by the divine beast, Simurg, were no longer needed. What's more, such duties have already been performed by me here, Rational and other party predating me. After Nagaryuna, the elder slowly broke off contact with the Order of Skeptics. However, the Skeptics themselves remained ever interested in us party. But I suppose this is nothing strange. To them, after all, we party are heroes worthy of songs and odds. The strong feelings of admiration we inspire are more than deserved. During that time, I often heard them loudly singing their poems and odes, and with the passing of time, the scenes of the divine bird's sacrifice grew ever more vivid. Yet my elder treats this as if it was a potter thing. It sounds like Sarush got buttered up by honey words. What? No, impossible. 
I clearly wanted to imitate the divine bird because I was moved by its passion and will. The only reason I why I associated with the Order of Skeptics was because they would tell me about the happenings of years past. Of course, it wasn't like they didn't heap an appropriate amount of praise on me. It's the same story, but told in an exaggerated way to get people's attention. Even Paimon likes listening to excited stories. Oh, but if their intention was to record actual history, then they definitely did something wrong. Indeed, regardless of if it is I or the humans of the other skeptics, those who condition themselves to accept hyperbole as ordinary will see themselves become like this. The Order of Skeptics archives were no longer simple, truthful records. Instead, they were filled with all manner of embellishments and subjective opinions. And unknowingly, I began to put renown beyond action itself. Looks like I finally get it. She seems more energetic than she was when she came here. Isn't this a good thing? Now Zervan won't be asking to take the chaplet, will she? Your training is almost at the end, at, at its end. You'll definitely win Zervan's approval. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. Time to go! You look much happier than when we last spoke. Seems things have gone well. Mm, from what I've learned doing these tasks, I have grown for now. You are worthy of being called a Moongard. No, not yet. There is still a final portion of the task that I need to complete. Until all the tasks are done, until your respect is earned, I am not finished. Only then can the Twin Horn Chaplet truly belong to me. Oh, looks like you are actually beyond your rebellious phase after all. Just as was claimed. Uh, Elder, you still remember that? Forget, I beg of you. Huh, regardless, it's good to see that your spirits have returned. Ignis Paimon, please be witness to the truth of whether Sorush is worth of the Twin Chaplet. Then I will await you at the end. See you soon. Okay, just one more. Oh, I think it's up there. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. Oh, I didn't. Uh, 
uh, I think she'll be better. It's a big partner. Give me a forget about me. Forgive me. Time to go. Forgive me. The stunning hollow from before, the epicenter of the disaster of years past. Well, Paimon didn't think Sumrush would really be able to extinguish the sign of Apaosha and solve all the trouble happening here. Extinguishing the sign of Apaosha is but the duty of the Bloomguard, so Rush only did as she should. It was all thanks to me here and Rashno's help and us. Yeah, and we put in plenty of work too. Explain it. It's so nice of you, my Yasna passing the play the pale floater. You look beyond the person of greatest importance. Me. Well, Sorush's arrogance makes its cringe return. Huh. Why do both of you still harbor such doubt of in me after our time together? My pride has never been born of blind arrogance. Um, you should be well aware that I fully understand my past mistakes. Before, I placed reputation above action, but now, I, as I have learned, this is an act of purest neglect. Just as Simur became the divine bird through her sacrifice, I will become the Bloomguard by my deeds and hear my name rightfully sung in praise of my service. Additionally, I have completed all the assignments you have given me, Elder. Now, even you must admit that I am one worthy of the title of Bloomguard, worthy of the Twin Sh Hornet Chaplet. I indeed have no objection to the choice made by the Gvoreda. Hmm? What? Did you expect me to object? No, I merely did not expect you to agree so easily, Elder. I expect a few rough words at least. Ah, I'm not nearly so vicious. About the responsibilities of a Bloomguard, I did not actually gain any knowledge from the chaplet. Is this because I still do not embody the traits of the Bloomguard fully? Do I still lack training? For this, the title of Bloomguard might be inherited, but the duties are always variable. I see. To state is simply, there is no fixed rules, and even more, there are no specific judges, judging st standards. Usually the Cavarina's choice is final. Hmm, so you're saying? I will not be taking the Twin Corn Chaplet from you. No, you don't need to worry about the top of your head getting cold. Will not or, will not or cannot. Yeah, as Riva said herself, 
the Kivernus choice is final. That means that the servant can't change it either, right? Oh, do you really think so? Oh, that's a little scary. I understand. This must be part of the test. Seems like Sarush is having an epiphany. You are a forgetful one, Bill Floater. I just said it. To pass these tests, besides competence and observation, the most important thing is understanding my past mistakes. Even if the outcome was already determined, would it not be retreating the path of folly if I cast aside all that I have learned during training? So I think this must be the last test my elder has left me. But to a worthy Bloomgard, this is but a simple test. This is a sign of your complete trust in me, Elder. I didn't expect you to see right through me. The Kivran chose well. But your changes, I suppose, it is impossible to bear some credit for that. Indeed, my esteemed Yasnapat and the Pale Floater are both beings of merit. Though so I wish to say that I was spotted and not alone, that I think truly that only with their aid could I extinguish the Sinai Apostle. I didn't think that, in, in so short a time, Sarush could become so responsible. Of course, as long as I hold my responsibilities close to heart, then my elder need not worry for my sake. Fimo keeps thinking that Zerfa might have planned this, but since Sarush is happy, Fimo can't really complain. Too. All right, and that's it. Okay, good. And that was the interesting to start it all. But I got a little bored reading so much. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Tomorrow, I got some time. I'm going back to choose the kingdom.